Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to reveal which is the AI tool I finally decided to use for all of my research. I'm also going to look at the research on how AI tools can help teach your well-being. So if you're interested in finding out what is the AI research tool that I finally decided to subscribe to, then please keep on watching. Okay, so it's taken me, I would say, probably six months to try and choose which AI research tool to use. And this is before all of the deep research tools were released last week. I actually subscribed to this two weeks ago, but I'm still really happy with my choice because I want direct access to research papers. And I've talked about this tool before. It's called Consensus. So let's just have a look at Consensus. So here is the home page. Um, I'm on the Pro because I've actually subscribed. And I'm just going to go to one of the conversations that I had. So here's my library. I'm going to move myself over to this side. And the last research question that I wanted to look at was how can AI tools improve teacher well-being and reduce burnout? I recently gave a well-being talk for Toddle for the uh, for the educators in India really trying to help teachers with their well-being, reminding them of what is important, how to look after themselves, and also use AI tools to really transform some of their learning experiences for their students. So here we go. AI tools can significantly improve teacher well-being and reduce burnout by optimizing workload management, enhancing professional development and providing personalized support. So I think that a lot of the low-level mundane tasks can be automated or we can utilize AI to save time when it comes to email communications, for example, and perhaps even giving students initial qualitative feedback. But I'm hoping that we'll be able to really use the power of AI to transform learning experiences for students and rethink what learning looks like. So workload management, it says AI tools such as ChatGPT can assist teachers by automating lesson planning and content development. It can give us lots of ideas and brainstorm ideas for us, which are major contributors to teacher burnout. So by using AI for these tasks, teachers can reduce their workload and focus more on student interaction and personalized learning. So if students are perhaps interacting with an AI tool to get some qualitative feedback, we can actually then focus on other students having discussions and we can actually use it as a really powerful tool in classrooms. And I was talking earlier about how AI can automate administrative tasks, further alleviating the burden on teachers and allowing them to concentrate on the core teaching activities. And for me, that's about relationships, relationships, relationships. We should be focusing most of our time on building relationships with students, gaining their trust, earning their respect, and then really helping them with their learning. So what else can AI tools help with? Professional development and autonomy. AI-powered applications can enhance teachers' professional growth and autonomy. By integrating AI tools into educational practices, teachers can engage in more self-directed and independent instructional practices, which contributes to their professional development and reduces digital burnout. Now, this empowerment through AI tools can lead to a more fulfilling teaching experience and lower stress levels. And we know some of the statistics are about how teachers are leaving the profession. So we wanna make sure that we prevent this kind of teacher burnout and, and teachers leaving the profession. Okay, conclusion, let's just jump here and then we'll look at some of the papers so that you can see the links to these papers. So conclusion, AI tools have the potential to transform the teaching profession by reducing workload, enhancing professional development and providing personalized support. These tools can alleviate stress and burnout among teachers, leading to a more sustainable and satisfying teaching environment. However, successful implementation requires a holistic approach, including proper training and personalization of AI tools, and that's key. So I know that the new EU AI Act actually recommends that the education field provides proper AI training for teachers and for all members of the community and AI institutions. So let's have a look at some of the papers. We've got one here, the effects of educational AI powered applications on teachers perceived auto autonomy, professional development. Here's another one, AI to the rescue, exploring the potential of ChatGPT as a teacher ally for workload, relief and burnout. Let's have a look at this one. Okay, so I'm just gonna click on the paper and then you get access to the paper with consensus. 
uh, three influential citations, 18 citations. Uh, we've got the PDF, we can cite it, we can share it, we can save it. So here's the abstract. And if I was actually looking on Google Scholar or my university library, I would be reading through abstracts first. What I love about consensus is it can really garner research papers from a variety of different sources. If I actually just look at the abstract or here, it gives me a key takeaway. ChatGPT can effectively reduce teacher workload and prevent burnout by providing personalized learning and content development assistance for English, science and math subjects. Teacher workload and burnout reduction is the outcome and then the results. So a nice little summary. It gives me the citations, the references, and I can also interact and ask any questions also about this. So um, so over here, I can load more results. I can ask about this paper. And then when I click on ask about this paper, if I just move myself in the middle so you can see, here is the actual paper with the abstract. And here's the summary on the right hand side, learning what some of the examples for optimizing teacher planning using ChatGPT. And then I can actually just interact with this paper, just like in Notebook LM, how I can interact with uh, the various papers as well. And this is a free open access paper. OK, so I'm just going to close this and, and I'm just going to show you the payment page so that you know what you're getting in terms of the payment. OK, so here are the payment plans. I thought this was actually the most reasonable when I looked at all the research AI tools. I was on the free version for quite a long time. I've moved to the premium because I just look at too much research to just and, and the free plans were just not and the free plans were just not comprehensive enough for me. This is for teams and then we have enterprise. And then you can see some of the universities that actually use it. Princeton, Northwestern. Uh, what have we got? UCLA, Michigan, Harvard, McKinsey uses it, Johnson & Johnson, Berkeley. So you can see, oh, and even NASA, it says down here. So some of the big organizations use this. Now, the other bit of research that I wanted to conduct for my total talk, which was on well-being and AI, was I wanted to know about the benefits of connecting with nature and well-being and, you know, the importance of us being able to either connect with nature or to forest bathe. So I kind of shared a little bit of this research for my talk. I summarized it, of course, and we know that connecting with nature has psychological benefits, physical benefits. So as well as being just connected to nature, the importance of connection, uh, practical applications, and then overall connecting with nature offers a pathway to improved mental and physical health with the strongest benefits observed in those who feel a deep connection to the natural world. Engaging in simple nature related activities and fostering a sense of connectedness can significantly enhance well-being. And I thought that was really interesting. OK, so let's just have a look. I also want a follow up question and I'm just thinking, where do I put that follow up question related? What are the psychological benefits? How about if I add here? OK, I'm going to just do dictate to text. How much time is recommended to connect with nature on a weekly basis? OK, so I'm just going to put a question mark. and I want to know how much time is recommended on a weekly basis. So how many hours should we really be connecting with nature per week? And this is what I recommended in my talk. It says research suggests that spending at least 120 minutes per week. OK, so a couple of hours per week in nature is associated with better health and well-being with benefits peaking between two and three hundred minutes per week. So if you have the opportunity to connect with nature, even just for 30 minutes or 45 minutes a day or at least a couple hours per week, you will reap wonderful benefits in terms of your well-being. OK, so thank you for joining me this week. I have decided to subscribe to Consensus. I look at too much research not to have a good AI tool. I've researched so many. Consensus was the most affordable, uh, easy to interact with. And also, I'm not looking for an AI research tool that will actually write research for me. I just want to look at the papers and interact with the papers. So for me, Consensus was actually the one that was going to be the most appropriate for the work that I do. So thank you so much for joining me this week. If you use any other AI research tools that you would like to recommend, then please put a comment in the section below. I'd love to try the free versions and I don't mind subscribing to more than one. But at the moment, I'm really happy with consensus. So thank you once again for joining me and I'll see you next time.